which will have children and those children are going to be well let's first create a linear progress indicator like this and once we save that you can see that somewhere at the top there is some sort of a linear <laughs> progress indicator displayed but we of course want to center it so on this column we're going to define the main axis alignment which in the case of a column is of course vertical that's the main axis of the column and we're going to say that this alignment is going to be main axis alignment center dot center and just like that this linear progress indicator which is indeterminate because we have not provided any value to it it's null by default is now going to be centered you can also provide some sort of a value to it like for example 0 0.5 in which case it's gonna become a determinate progress indicator right 0 0.2 0 0.9 but if you just want to run it continuously you don't define any value and then it's just going to uh, be running forever and ever but we want to sort of offset this progress indicator from taking up the whole width of the screen to being a bit padded from the sides so let's actually provide a padding to the whole column so let's wrap it with padding and again we're just using Okay. Command dot or control dot to show this context menu. And the padding is not going to be edge insets all size 8 logical pixels, but we want to have the padding only from the left and from the right of the screen. So that means we want to have the horizontal padding and to define padding only horizontally we're going to use edge insets symmetrical or symmetric only and this symmetric constructor takes in horizontal and uh, vertical values so we want to specify horizontal and let's set it to 48 logical pixels and now it immediately looks much better when it's padded by 48 pixels from the left and 48 pixels from the right for being a splash page this looks quite good even now but really this is a repo viewer application dealing with github so we should probably show the github logo even on a splash page now there are multiple ways to show a github logo uh, if you have some not so much common logo that you want to show you need to add your own image to the app as an asset and show it like that you are going to learn how to add an asset image to your app and show it but only later on because when it comes to the github logo 
this is so widely known and widespread that we can actually show it as an icon. And for predefined icons, we do not need to show a regular image, but instead we can use the icon widget. And this icon widget takes in icon data like this and there are certain icons which are predefined and that come bundled with flutter itself for them we can use the icons <laughs> object and get for example icons ac unit and display an ac unit and we would be able to set the size of this icon to 150 logical pixels it would look like this and then there is icons dot I don't know uh, account box which looks like this these icons which come bundled with flutter by default are the material icons and they are present here because in uh, popspec yaml we have specified under flutter that you use material uses material, material design. design so enabling this to true adds the icons class that we can then use it from our splash page for example to show this kind of an account box icon but when it comes to github github is not included in these default material icons but we can instead use a custom third-party icon pack or icon package that has the github icon inside of it so let's do just that we're gonna go to popspec yaml and just like with all of the other packages we're gonna now add a package which is called material design icons flutter let's actually search for it on pub.dev so material design icons flutter and it's, it's right over icons here flutter. Here, and as you can see, it's the Material Design Icons icon pack available as a set of Flutter icons. So if you're not aware of it, there is this Material Design Icons Community Icon Pack, which has its own website. And it's really cool because this is a community icon pack, which is using the Material Design language. And it contains, as you can see, really a lot of different icons. I mean, really a lot of them. And all of these icons are available in this Flutter package. So if we add it, we need to use the pre-release because this is the null safety version and we want to use null safety in our app. So let's copy it. Link to it will also be in the lesson notes. And we can now use it as just any kind of uh, other package in our PubSpec YAML. So let's save the PubSpec YAML. And once it's saved, we can now go back to our splash page and to use the icons from that package, we're going to say MDI icons. And the icon we want to use is GitHub, like this. But the issue is that currently this icon is not yet loaded inside of our app because what we've done by including this new package for the material design icons is that behind. Okay, this is the right thing. This package adds a new file which needs to be bundled into the app as it's installed on the device or on the simulator in this case. But when the app is already running, 
that new file which contains all of the icons can now be bundled into the application package while it's installed. So we need to completely stop the app from running. Mega. So, this is okay. They had a campaign that also. So, I'm going to and restart it completely anew. So, let's just go back to the The uh, splash page and just hit F5. Uh, uh, 出来了。F again. And once that's done, we are going to see the GitHub icon in the splash page. And here we go. We can see the GitHub icon and also the loading indicator. But let's sort of optimize this code because you can see that the icon can be made constant and also this linear progress indicator can be constant. And since they are all inside a single list of widgets, which are the children of column, this whole list can be constant. And then we also want to space out this icon apart from this linear progress indicator a bit. So let's do it with a sized box. And its height will be 16 pixels. 
Now we have the splash page done, but it's not enough to have the splash page because we also need to, from somewhere, as soon as the app starts, call the method present on our auth notifier called check and update auth status. Mm. And then once this method finishes, uh, the show the splash. Page 的目的是为了把一些初始的工作在这个这个 Splash Page 的背后把它做完，就是那些工作做完以前，我们城市不能正常开启嘛，所以才是用这个这个可以想象城市我们城市的遮羞板，就被浪举起来说其实还没有 ready， 先用这块把自己遮着，然后在背后赶快把该该处理的事情处理完。It's execution. And the state is either updated to authenticate it. 那到目前为止，我们唯一需要做的就是检查是否已经登录了，检查这个状态，因为它是一个非同步，所以需要一点时间去做。Or to unauthenticate it, we will then want to navigate away from this splash page into either the sign-in page or the start repositories page. So let's do that initial check for authenticated state. And we are going to do that from nowhere else than the app widget. From app widget, 来做这件事情。啊，想一下哦，这个空其实可以打开全屏幕吧。要从这里来做。好，这一课先这样就结束了，应该没什么问题，相对简单的一课。How can we go about calling the auth notifiers check and update auth status method when the app is launched? Well, the easiest option would be to make this app widget a stateful widget, which we can do with a uh, context menu like this. And then we would add an init state method, right? Init state, and just get the auth notifier in the init state method from its provider. Which is right over here inside of shared providers that dart in the auth feature, and then on this auth. This part is more deep. We will listen again. He is talking about a way to get the auth state from the auth. The auth notifiers check and update auth status method. When the app is launched, well, the easiest option would be to make this app widget a stateful widget, which we can do with a、uh, context menu like this. And okay, 当你有一个状态要改变的时候呢，原本这个 widget 是 status。这个这个跳着好讨厌啊！这能不能有个？ Delay 呀，设定 vs call vs call， 然后它什么 definition delay 哦 ，delay for definition for declaration。Too soon. How to change the delay? Parameter hint. Hover delay, okay. Editor hover delay. Hover delay. Some by, but it's a bit slow. Many times, it's not necessary. I'll change it to another six hundred. Let's see. You're sure this? 
harbor delay. Control delay means which harbor is shown. I think this is this. It's also very fast. Okay. 直接可以加两个，你看你会怎样？不是。Yes，靠，跳这个，这应该是declaration吧。Head sense. Quick suggestion delay. Look at this. Just in head sense, no wrong. Generic term for.所以不，只能先讲，这个真的很烦。回到刚才讲的，就是这个位置现在是没有状态的。如果你要让它变成有状态，就是改成stay for 说启动是否完成啊，哈，然后这个值，这个值一旦改变了，这个app就会重新呼叫一次，build重build，就能够反映最新的状态。Then we would add an init state method, right? Init state. 呃，它的是比较严谨，就是那个状态是在 init state 这边，争取初始化的。比如说我们写。And just get the auth notifier in the init state method from its provider, which is right. He wants to get the auth state from provider. Here, from the provider. 我们的Scope,Providers.Data,Rather,Secure,Storage,Provider,Auth,Notify,Provider吧。Right over here, inside of shared,Providers.Dart in the auth feature, and then on this auth notifier we would call the method. This is possible. Auth notifier. 我们呼叫这个去new一个 auth notifier provider But as you might imagine 
checking the authentication status is not the only thing we are gonna be doing when the app starts there are gonna be a bunch of more initialization steps like for example once we have a local database for the repo cache we're gonna need to initialize the database when the app starts and while performing these kinds of initial configurations and calls from init state of the root widget of our app is not a bad idea we can do better since we are using the river Splash. pipe so let's just hit control and z a bunch of times or command Okay. Okay, stateless. Z on Mac. And we're going to do this in a different way. So, what we are going to do is that we're going to create an initialization provider right here inside of the app widget.dart file because as you remember, you can put providers anywhere when you are working with Riverpod. So final initialization provider. And this is going to be equal to a special type of provider, which is a future provider. And this future provider takes in a uh, function again which passes us a reference and this is going to be asynchronous we are using a future provider here because some of the initialization steps may be asynchronous so we might want to use the await keyword with them and future providers work much like regular providers uh, they can provide you with an object but that object may come asynchronously in the future oh, Provider本身从字面上就可以理解到他提供一个东西给你那你提供一个东西可以解决的问题就是dependency的问题就是我们的程式里面A物件通常会dependency物件 用的时候有可能是用A，有可能是用B，有可能是用C。那你分别帮A、B都写了Provider之后，我们现在直接看例子，Providers。看一下有没有什么好例子。这里这个例子应该就不错。OSNotifier provider 它。会需要一个叫做 GitHub Authenticator 的 provider OK 而这个 GitHub Authenticator provider 呢 它本身又需要另外两个 另外两个物件 那怎么取得那个物件一样用 provider 它需要一个 DIO provider 那 DIO provider 在写在上面 人家来要的时候我就我就new一个 DIO 给它 然后还需要一个 credential Storage provider 这个物件本身又需要另外一个 Flutter Secure Storage Provider 这个 provider 在上面 就是他们的dependency是形成一个 该说是树状结构吗 这个是树状结构 但它有可能会形成一个 graph 有回圈的 有回圈应该会有问题 目前我们看到的是一个树状结构 就是dependency的tree 藏在这个 page 后面的 所以这个 page 需要知道启动的状态完成了没
with the future type. However, we are not going to be using this future provider to really provide anything when uh, we are using providers here for the authentication feature we really do use every provider over here to simply provide an object whether it's flutter secure storage or even if it is an auth notifier we always provide a single object using a provider with this initialization provider the story is a bit different though we will not provide anything we're just going to perform initialization here as if this was a regular method. <laughs> We're going to be adding a bunch of more initialization steps here in the future. Mm -hmm. But for now, all we want to do here is to read the auth notifier provider. So let's say ref dot read. We do not want to say watch, but we say only read, read because we do not want this initialization provider to run multiple times whenever these watched providers change. Our providers are not going to change anyway, but if you watch a provider... Until the state of a provider calls the state to be re-evaluated. And the provider ends at new value supporting the scenario. Okay, that's a dependency tree is okay, big gun Provider read another provider. Just go on watch. Read 的话。是只要读一次就好。Read the state associated with the provider without listening to that provider. According to read instead of watch, it will not cause the provider state to be 
we create it. Okay, let's do. Here. And it changes, then this initialization provider would run once again. But we do not want that to happen. We want the initialization to happen only once. That's why we are going to only read these providers. And well, we want to read auth notifier provider. But this would read the state of the auth notifier provider. So we actually want to say dot notifier to read the actual auth notifier. Now let's put this into final auth notifier. And let's just call await auth notifier check and update auth status. And now when this initialization provider is run, we're going to check for the auth status. But how do we make this initialization provider run? We cannot just call a provider and uh, say run now. The way that providers work is that when they are used, they run. And when we are talking yeah. about fly Provider, when providers are no longer used, they don't run and they actually are usually disposed. And to use this initialization provider so that it runs as soon as the app starts and this app widget is first built, well, we are going to create something called a provider listener here. Now, in the future, this is going to change. You are not going to create any sort of a widget in the widget tree. Instead, you are going to change the type of this app widget to be a consumer widget. And then this build method will take widget reference, ref, and you are going to call ref dot listen and you will want to listen for the initialization provider and you're just going to listen with an empty callback because it doesn't matter what this initialization provider does what it outputs we don't actually want it to output anything we only care about that this initialization okay <coughs> Provider is from River Path this package. River Path in it, it's still being built. It's still in the original version 1.0 version. So it's still in development. So after the vision, it's still in the vision. 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 Once and that's it. So this is the code you will write. But as of now, unfortunately, uh, this new version is still not out yet and it's been in the works for quite some time so we'll just revert back to the stateless widget without the widget reference and all this stuff and as for me I'm going to wrap this whole material app in a widget which is going to be called provider listener and I will provide it with a provider which is the initialization provider and this also takes in an on change function, which provides us with a uh, context and value. And again, I'm not going to do anything on change. The only reason why we are listening to the initialization provider is that so it runs. Also, we get this blue squiggle line <laughs> under this uh, nested function. 
saying that the type of the function literal can be inferred so we should try adding an explicit type to the variable since we do not want to return anything from this feature provider let's specify Boy. unit from the darts unit. package just for good measure let's import darts and let's also return unit <laughs> OK,這邊這一個solution有點醜 provider 那他吃一個async的方群裡面async的方群所以你就可以去做你想做的非同步的事情不管這裡花多久都可以你就去做剛剛那個怎麼突然變大所以 那回传值不重要，我们这里直接改一下吧，因为provider，future，provider，它吃，它希望能够吃那个，希望可以吃一个type，所以我们给它一个type叫做unit，这个是从呃，data，data自己就是functional type，所以你要回传这个type，就回传小写的unit。为什么是大写小写？这里先不研究。然后为了用呼叫这个provider，它把它包在一个叫做什么？把它包在一个。Required provider required on change. Uh, provider need provider. 叫provider，有点拗口吧。然后呢，这种方式我都不喜欢写太多哈，就就这样就好。OK。这个。哎，Ctrl斜线嘛，我要怎么叫出那个点？ Ctrl点，啊，它左脚是底把，看左，Shift，Command，Y哦，哦，Shift，Command，U，Y，Output，U，Y，这是什么？Ctrl点，这是Ctrl加点，太复杂。但沒有reload啊有加一個運的吧證明一下這個家伙有沒有叫起來 
，那先 search 嘛。Terminal. Debug console. Search. Selected. Selected color. <coughs> 到底要怎么看呢、啊？<笑>救命啊！先不管这个好了。这里都没有引，我提到 console 的 color 吗？没有。OK， 我们就证明这一段是有跑道的了，那就先,先休息一下。这课先 mark 结束，然后扣 com commit 一下。All right, so now. 这算是 init 的架构。的时候，我应该会
我来了，继续。我很好奇、欸，这个这个台平常应该没有人在看的吧？一个就是我自己。<笑> Now we have this initialization provider, which is going to run whenever the app first runs. We're calling check and update auth status from it, which is going to set the authentication state to either authenticated or unauthenticated. But we are still not doing anything with these states because depending on whether the user is authenticated or not, we want to navigate either to the sign-in page or to the start repo space. Addition to having a provider listener for the initialization provider, which is not even really a listener, it's just here to trigger the initialization provider, we also need to have another listener in here, which is going to now truly listen to the auth notifier. So again, in your case, you're going to have a consumer widget here, which will have a widget reference ref and from the build method you are going to call ref.listen and then pass in the auth notifier and then a function which will pass you the value state, state the auth state and you will write the logic inside of here however for me again I will just comment this out I have to do it a bit differently. Let's actually leave this consumer widget in so that you know what's up in the future. So for me now, I want to wrap this material app in yet another provider listener. So wrap with a widget, provider listener. The provider will be the auth notifier provider, which will make it listen to the state of this auth notifier. Change, and on change. It's going to pass us the context and the, the value. value. Let's rename the value to state because that's what it is. It's of type auth state, which we need to actually specify here. So we are listening to auth state. Let's import auth state. And here we go. You will also need to specify auth state on the listen method then, like this, if you're watching this in the future. And what do we want to do from here whenever the auth state changes? Well, we are going to say state dot map because this is a freeze union, so we can use the map function. But actually, we are not going to say map, but only maybe map because we are not really interested in all of the states. In here, we are only interested in the authenticated and unauthenticated states. So if it's initial or failure state, we are not going to deal with that over here. We are going to deal with it elsewhere. Uh, so here, in our else, we are just going to ignore all of the other states. But in case the state is authenticated, we're going to get it in this function. Let's just give it a name underscore. State. So this underscore now is hmm. the authenticated state. And if the user is already authenticated, we will want to navigate to the start repos page, which is sort of the home page of our repo viewer app. So how can we do that? Usually when you want to navigate with the auto route package, you say auto router dot off context to obtain it from uh, this uh, widget tree above. But here you can immediately see a problem because we are calling auto router off context to retrieve it from somewhere above in the widget tree. But the auto router is actually declared below in the widget tree because a router is sort of a part of the material mm. app. So we cannot possibly get the auto router using this inherited widget syntax. So how can we obtain it then? Well, thankfully, we actually have an instance of app router 
inside of our app widget class because mm -hmm. that's simply what we need to do if we want to use it so we can access directly this class field so let's say app router and now we can say push and pop until and we are going to push the start repos route mm. so start repos route let's make it into a constant like that All right and we also need to specify some sort of a predicate because we are pushing and popping then on until this predicate is true and this predicate will never be true it will actually be always false so this predicate is a function which passes you a route object Normally be used to, for example, see route dot settings dot name, and you can check if the name of the mm. route which is currently being popped, or we are attempting to pop it rather. If this name is, for example, the splash page or splash route dot name, route name. If we were to do this, the popping of routes and to pop a route means that it's no longer shown. In this case, it would stop at the splash route, so the splash would still remain to be shown. Mm. But we actually want to pop all of the routes so let's say true false false this will ensure that all of the routes are popped and only the easy. start repos route is pushed so start repos route will be the only one present there so the user will not be able to navigate back to the splash page because it would look silly right if we are here which currently doesn't work because uh, we have uh, broken everything here let's hard restart here we go, how restart always helps. So it would be silly if the user, after checking if the user is signed in and we find out that he is, and we take that user to the start repositories so that uh, the start repositories are displayed. And it would be silly if the user could then just press the back, back. button and navigate to back to the splash page. I mean, it doesn't make sense, this splash page uh, should never be able to navigate back to it and that's why we are popping all of the routes so that only the start repos route will be present and navigating back will not be an option also another case which we want to handle here Okay, Maybe map 
那个 a l s 呃，除了我们关心的之外，我我比较喜欢的写法是这样 a l s 就。就空的嘛，然后如果如果说我们要填的，那就是那叫什么状态啊 ？Authenticated， 就做什么事情？路径叫做，呃、s t a r t r e p o s e route。现在这个应该是起不来的，所以我需要把它整个怎么重启？然后 ，restart。状态进来，这就比较奇怪了。应该要去跑这个、啊。三英是 f o r 所以是 unauthenticated。OK， 这样子重启之后就就有去跑到了，这些 log 就先留着，继续看下去。There is unauthenticated， so this is also going to pass us a state， this time unauthenticated state， and in here we are going to do a very similar thing。Login。But instead of start repos route， we are going to push the sign in route。刚有个东西没看。Push and pop until。东都没文件。所以他先 pop until， 然后再 push。
到底吧。嗯应该没有去成功，所以只能再重启。OK， 这一页应该是三页配局。OK， 发现登录状态是 false， 所以就 unauthenticated。然后这边就听到的是状态改变嘛，是 unauthenticated， 就利用 app router route 到三页 route route。And here it's even more important to pop everything because yes, this unauthenticated thing will run when on the first launch of the app we check the auth status and if the user is not authenticated, this will run. But this will also run at other times, namely when the user signs out. If I open up the already finished app, it will become clear. So. Think about this. We are in these star repositories route, and we actually search for a repository. Let's say Flutter. So we can now go back to the start repositories, right? So we are sort of、uh, two routes deep: start, and then this、uh, search routes. And when the user signs out from here. It would be silly if the user could navigate back to see the star repositories or even the searched ones. It doesn't make sense. The user is signed out already, so there cannot be no back navigation. And that's why it's very important to pop all of the routes whenever the user becomes unauthenticated, whether that is on the first. <laughs> Then, 最好是看一下几个基本的用法。嗯，稍今天稍早要讲到一个写<咳>了这个 app router 之后，它 b u i l router 会帮我们产生一个点 G R。那这个是这一个 package 做的 auto route generator。<咳>然后要让这个可以 work， 同时你要安装 build runner， 然后这些都是放在 d v dependency， 也就是说是开发时候需要有在场的套件。那真正把这个 app 送到手机上的时候，要要 dependency 的是看这个 dependency， 这些是不会被送到手机上去的。那基本用法是。先写一个这个 template at material auto router replace in route name 这些细节不看，那这里做了两个页面，两个路径嘛，一个是 book list， 一个是 book detail， 然后初始初始路径是这个 book list。Using part builder extends。对，先不看，我想要看怎么样来来去去的。设定完成的时候，就是在 Material App 点 Router 这边把。Router delegate 跟 Router information Router information parser 从产生出来的那个 code 卷产生出来的 c 
class 里面指定过去。Generated routes。Uh, if the declared route has children, auto route will children 是这个吧？我看一下刚刚是怎么 declare。不知道 c h i l d r e n 是怎么设定你说 children， OK， 如果有 children， 那你在建构这个路径的时候要。Nasty navigation。Navigating between screen， 用这个 app router of context 去取得 router。好，别来了。刚说要看 auto route 怎么用嘛，关好。
他先 push 了一个叫 box 的路径啊，你可以用两种方式 push 都可以。啊、当然是这种比较好哈，因为这是写死的。如果它里面路径有改，这里扣也要跟着改。然后它 replace it, remove last entry, push provided。叫 replace navigate。pop until provided route if it。Already exist. Else, add it to the stack. 两水哦。Replace all. Replace all 是什么 ？Like providing a completely new stack as it rebuild all。所以其实我们那边可以用 replace all 比较单纯一点吧。Like providing a completely new stack。Up last page. Pop until keep popping routing until predicate is satisfied. Predicate 断言，就是到第二个参数回传 true 啦，不是第二个，到这个 predicate 这个参数回传 true。那这个参数何时会是出？它就去检查 route 的 name 是不是我要的那个路径，也就是把这个路径以上的都剔除掉。简化版。嗯，那、啊、居然没有我们那个，我们用这个 push and pop until。这个这个 method 大概被淘汰掉了，感觉我们这里要用的应该是，想一下，那先 pop until， 然后全部都拿掉，所以基基本上就是 replace all 了。基本上就是这一个吧。List of routes， 所以它可能需要一个这个东西。传参数就是在 new 那个 route 的时候，可以把它这样当这样传进去。有没有那个 query string 的概念啊？这个是 parameter argument。Pass argument, pass parameter. The page 里面可以像这样子 at pass parameter ID 把它抓出来。
query parameter. At a query param. Oh, this we continue. Initialization provider run, or when the user actually signs out by pressing that sign out button in the app. If I go back to the app which we are currently developing, whoops, right here, and I hot restart it, what we should see is that we are now going to navigate to the sign in sign route, route. Uh, because, of course, I mean, we are not signed in because we have not yet implemented that logic. So let's hot restart. And as you can see, we are taken to a black screen, which should be the sign in page. So we can uh, test it out pretty easily. Uh, we can, we have multiple options how to test it out, but the simplest one is to go to the sign in page and again, to just uh, return a scaffold, which should make the background white. <laughs> and sure, it is white, so we know we are inside of the signing page. And just like that, you now know how to perform initialization inside an app widget and also how to navigate to different pages or routes depending on the authentication state. Okay. The Ninja call. Authenticated state. Sign in force. This end. Because It's cool that we can determine whether or not the user is signed in and then to navigate to a proper page for authenticated and unauthenticated state. But how can we actually authenticate the user? So we already have the infrastructure layer completed, the domain layer completed, page. and application layer completed for the auth feature, but still we are missing the presentation layer implementation, which is equally as important. In the case of the auth feature, the presentation is very important because uh, it's actually a part of the process since we're gonna be using a web view. So let's build this sign-in page. We're already seeing it in the simulator because we have navigated over there since the user is not signed in. So it's going to have a scaffold at its root and then the body of the scaffold is going to be a column it's hard to 
ต่อมาโอ้ OBS เช่าเฮาเตียนเฮาไป And this column will contain children that are going to be the GitHub logo again. So as we already know, we can show a GitHub logo by using an icon. So icon, and it will be from the Material Design icons. So MDI icons dot GitHub. Aha. Right, looking something like this. So we cannot even see it properly because it's hidden in this <laughs> corner of the device. So that's not great to sort of offset the. Why is it hiding? Sign page, core os, presentation sign page, scaffold, that is a good color. Uh, corners of the device and these notches, which many devices nowadays have, we can use a safe area. So inside a scaffold in the body, let's wrap the column with a new widget, safe area. And this is literally going to put all of the widgets inside a area, which is okay. Do you think? 这年头的手机，所有的东西最好都包在 safe area 里面。Wrapper center 改成 safe area， 我看一下哦，左转，断腰掉下来。Safe from any curves and notches and so on, but still, this is not what we want to do here, right? Uh, what we want to do is to center this uh, GitHub icon and let's first make it bigger. So let's make it size 150. And let's also open up uh, DevTools, which we can do from this button up here when the app is running. We can open DevTools and let's press over here on this icon to show debug paint. So we're now going to see on the screen uh, individual positioning of the widgets and how they are laid out so we can Why is it not 
see that the whole column itself, I hope you can see it on video as well, is just moved to the side. So we want to center this column. So let's wrap it with a center widget, which we cannot do for some reason. Hmm, very interesting. Wrap with center. Okay. Now we can do it, thankfully. So let's wrap it with a center widget. And now it's centered horizontally. So we have just centered the column. And to center things within the column, we are going to column main axis. the main axis alignment, which, of course, in the case of column, the main axis is vertical. So we're going to say main center. axis alignment dot center. Okay. So All right. Let's actually close this inspection. Just obstructing our view quite a bit. And now we'll want to have a text inside of this column as well, which will say text. Welcome to Repo Viewer. By default, text is going to be very small, looking like this. To make it look bigger, we can specify the style, which is a text style. And we can either define it like this by inputting the font size ourselves. So font size is, I don't know, 48, and this will become huge. But usually, instead of specifying styling like this for a text Sim style and many other things, awful. you should prefer to use styles from a theme. So the Material App widget provides us with a theme, which we have currently not modified in any way. We're going to get to that later on in this module. But even the default Material theme contains some nice presets for the text style. So let's use one of those presets, which we can obtain by calling theme dot off context. And now we want to go for the text theme dot headline three. And this is going to look like this, but this doesn't look good at all because we want the text to have a line break between welcome to and repo viewer. That's the first thing. And to add a line break, we can just use the new line character, which is backslash n. So now it looks like this. And let's also align the text itself to the center. So we're going to say text align on this text, text widget is going to center. be text align dot center. Nice. Let's add some minor spacing between this text and the icon. So we're going to uh, the size box here, which will have height of 16. So add the const modifier. And let's also make this icon constant. And now for the important stuff, which is the button which the user can actually press to be taken to a page which will show the web view with the sign-in form directly from github and then that github web page will redirect to the redirect uri which will contain the authorization code which we can exchange for the access token in which we are interested right from the start and this button will be an elevated button which takes text 
That's a nice center. Okay. 把家里的高度是十六的间隔。Size the box. Height. 十六点零。press which is a function and also a child which usually is a text the new so let's do that it's going to be a text saying sign in and let's actually turn off this uh, outline so let's open up the widget inspector again and let's press this button hide debug paint all right so this button now looks kind of funny we do not want it to look like that uh, sign in button should be green and it should stretch to the whole width of the column so first let's make it stretch to make things stretch within a column we're going to set the cross axis alignment on the column to be cross axis alignment dot stretch <laughs> Yadu这个Fratakai把影片 那我们放center 我们这个主轴自放的主轴是自中所以东西都会从正中央开始放它从正中央开始往两侧去展开然后现在要调的是横轴 cross axis 就是主轴的另一个轴就是横轴这个它之所以要这样命名是有意义的因为如果是row的话 now row the cross axis 横轴就是重的 就是vertical OK 所以column是直的 重的 所以它的axis cross axis 它的它的横轴就是横的水平的现在控制水平的东西怎么放那如果不动的话我猜我记得它应该是center吧 那如果有 现在这样侧边设定 stretch 它就会把自己 and just like that, okay. this button now stretches. We do not want it to stretch all that much though. So let's add some padding from the side of this column. So let's uh, stretch So we a button. Just elevated button. 那这东西需要两个参数 怎麼這麼大,不是。sign in。如果我要成是cross axis。alignment 
他的意思是每个 trial 都会把自己撑到最大，因为他有多少空间，他就用用多少，这不是我们要的。通常会加，讲一下。我刚我刚刚的想法是说，没有这一行的时候，那你就第三个最小的这个把自己撑到。